What's up folks, welcome to Wasted Space, welcome back to Space Engineers, and we're back with probably my favourite design challenge in Space Engineers, and that is making weapons of mass destruction. The Jerichos, the Lotuses, those player-made rockets that I rather enjoy. Now it's been a while since I've done any of that, so I took a few steps back, started doing a bit of testing like I did back in the day to understand what the most efficient payload would be to put on one of these missiles. Get everything else standardised, get everything else the same, and just change out what we're sticking on the front of a missile to understand what it takes to get through various different armour configurations. So in front of me here is a site that will probably be a bit familiar to some of you if you've been around on the channel for a while. It's not the same testing range as the one back in the day, we've got a fresh one, but similar sort of concept. At this end we've got a bunch of missiles set up with different variants to try out, and at that end we've got a bunch of targets, designed to be set up in such a way where this is all very consistent and repeatable. So there's a kilometre between here and there, I'm keeping consistent thrust every time, and all I'm changing is what goes on the front. So if we go down to the end quickly, we've got a fairly standard setup here. Ignore the bits up the top here, this was just so I could do some filming, so there's a positioned and angled seat. We have a bunch of different armour configurations set up, with one block thick, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks. I then didn't go any further than that, because while it's common to see when people are doing weapons testing a big, thick row of blocks to test penetration, people don't build ships like that. Ships have, I mean, even four layers of armour is quite thick for a ship. I'm, maybe some of you are built bigger, but... You know what I mean, they tend to have big gaps inside where you put all the juicy stuff, the bits you need, rather than just being thick slabs of armour. So instead of going further than that, I instead started to space the armour out, because sometimes people do this instead, where you have a spaced armour set up on the outside. So we've got a one block spacing, a two block spacing, and then a three block spacing. And of course, down on the bottom here, so I could test heavy armour as well, we have a duplicate of exactly the same thing, but in heavy. So if I just jump back to the character here, I can give you a demonstration of, of what the testing procedure looks like. Now, I'm not going to go through this for each, for each one, each variant. We'll have a look at which ones made a difference and which ones came up with the important results. But might as well demonstrate this because it does look kind of cool when they all go off together. The missiles themselves obviously super simple, only the bits required to make it work. The important part was to keep the missile the same every time and just change that payload on the front. So this was test one, Looks, I wish we'd had this inertial dampener tool when I was doing the old testing, it looks so much cooler. But initial test one was what I thought to be the most obvious one, single warhead on the front. And slightly surprisingly, none of the armours stood up to that, not even a single warhead. And you're through four layers of light armour. Now we won't talk about the heavy armour quite yet, I'm firstly going to focus on this, but one important thing to note is what's going on in the distance over here. Those are three engines floating off into the distance, left over from those missiles we just fired. For some reason, the engines survive, almost as if it was only the warhead that blew up the missile. So let's reload the map quickly. Uh, you can see, I mean, that's totally ruined, not really much point looking at the damage. It's pretty much identical for all of them, with the exception of the four-layer one. You can kind of see that the explosion went off on the surface. It kind of demonstrates that it's definitely exploding on impact because you've got such a clear, like, ridged opening where the explosion went off to begin with, and then the missile went through the hole. So having established that the warhead was really quite deadly, I figured we'd scale it back a little bit. Okay, so what happens if we don't have a warhead at all? So I've got one here that's got a block of heavy armour on the front instead, and I've also got one that's got no armour at all. It just fronts off with the battery. This is sort of an attempt to make the missile more efficient, and we'll whack these down. Okay, this one's going against two blocks, that one's going against one block of light armour, but it'll still give you an idea what to expect, and in fact, I think I might ride along with this one. It happens to have a seat in it, why not? Hopefully the timers have got both of them. Yep, both of them, so let's start that off. And see what happens when we really sort of lower down and narrow down the payload to something super duper simple. I mean, I don't think you can make a missile much more simple than this. It's just got an engine, a gyro, and the heavy armour on the front. You can see the, the yellow one slightly outpaces us on initial acceleration. It's also heading slightly downwards. Oops. But you can also see that uh, both of us just punched straight through that. No concerns whatsoever. In fact, both of us lost a consistent number of blocks as well. I lost the heavy armour and the battery. He lost his battery and the timer that was behind it. So we both lost two blocks going through that interesting. So, inevitably, next up is to go back and see, well, what happens if we then push it against the hardest? You know, we got one in the middle there that's got 
four blocks of heavy of light armor. What happens against the four blocks of light? And hell, let's use let's use this one as well, the super duper weak one, because it started to dawn on me that this light armor, this light armor is not not so good. So we're going to follow this one in, and this I remember is against now four blocks of light armor. And this missile is literally just made out of the battery, the timer, and everything. There's nothing more to it than that. And still it goes through. In fact, still it goes through and leaves. Is there still bits coming? No, it looks like that's about the limit of things. So that was four blocks for four blocks of light armor. Rather convenient. And that seems to continue and be quite consistent. So knowing that you could punch through light armor quite straightforward with the large ship blocks, I tried initially something really quite straightforward for the small ships as well. So as you can imagine just a big block of heavy armor on the front on the basis that this would be the, kind of the most efficient way of doing things. You know, if, if you can just make it out of small blocks and it's just a block of armor on the front, then that's a really efficient way of, of blowing a missile into someone else's vessel. This is even cheaper and even easier than one of the large grid ones. So what happens when you fire little grid into large grid armor these days? The answer is actually not too bad. And not only that, but you'll notice that what we get left with is the back of the ship and the heavy armor bit at the front. So that led me down the line of thought. You can kind of guess where I'm going with this as we go over and look at the other variants. Where I was like, okay, we need to separate that front bit away from the craft. So if we can shift it away from the craft, maybe that can poke the hole and then this can go through afterwards be armed with warheads. And so we started off with this, and nope, that didn't work. And we kept going until we ended up with some rather ridiculous contraptions that I've got here. <laughs> so I'll quickly show you what this is all about. It, it sort of works, and it sort of doesn't. But it'll give you an idea of the sort of thing I was trying before I decided that in reality, small ship's probably not the way to go. So I have to manually control this one. Number one kicks us off, and number two fires the spar in the middle out of the way. Which I thought was going to be really cool, but it also, unfortunately, knocks that front bit out of alignment. And without making it too expensive, there wasn't really a way around that that I could find. Also, we've got that bit over there spinning around like an utter lunatic. But I couldn't really find a sensible way to calm that down. So while the small grid stuff was fun... It doesn't really seem to work as well as it perhaps could because I really want to have something where you're not just breaking the outside armor. And if we go and fire like this one, for example, at the multi-layer light armor, we don't even go the whole way through it. So just launch this one off and you'll see this this doesn't even get through that like four layer thick light armor or three layer thick light armor. It blows itself up and you end up with just that little bit of heavy armor left at the end. It's kind of weird. You see what I mean? It's like, and, and why is this still left? So having established that the light armor really wasn't going to be much of a problem, I can definitely design something to penetrate that. The next question was, okay, how does the heavy behave in comparison? So let's grab exactly the same one we started off against. And on the bottom here, I've got that heavy armor set up. So this is just going to be one warhead against one layer of heavy armor. And you'd like to think this is going to go through because this is to be honest, quite an expensive missile at this point if all you're firing at is a single layer of heavy. So we'll follow her in and see what happens when she impacts at the far end. And as I did this heavy armor testing, and of course I did this testing a lot, we were firing these things back and forwards constantly, we've wrecked that light armor down the bottom. It's all floating off into space, but the damage done to the heavy armor? Isn't that impressive, if I'm honest? Not for that entire missile. So I thought, okay, well, I mean, technically that went through. I'm not sure how much damage you're going to do on the inside, but let's go and try that against something thicker. I mean, if someone's heavy armoring their ship, they may well have two layers or three layers, right? It's not just going to necessarily be that one layer. And so let's see. I'd like to get that missile to do a bit more damage as well because the juicy stuff's on the inside, not on the outside. Let's, let's see what happens when you shoot something a bit thicker. Is this going to do the job? Because so far... I'm a bit unimpressed with the damage we're dealing. I'm riding the rocket into our demise. And as you guys can probably imagine, while again, we do huge amounts of damage to the light armor down below, the damage dealt to that heavy armor 
is a little disappointing. You can kind of see that you're going to get through one layer, and I think that second layer might have been damaged by the bits of the missile poking in. I mean, we've got this thruster just chilling out in there. But at that point, you're not, you're not really doing decent damage to that ship. We're only two layers in. Certainly not doing internal component damage. So, going down exactly the same line of thought that I did when I was testing this. Okay, up the warheads. More warheads equals bigger boom. Gonna make the missile pretty expensive, but at least we'll be able to get through the armor. So, on this spot, we've got... Exactly the same missile again, and I'll let's let's add another. I think I'll put them on the sides; so they all impact at once. That might give them a better chance, rather than lining them up. I think if we line them up, they're they're going to end up going off weird, right? One will detonate all the rest. So let's put five warheads. Quite an expensive missile at this point, but anyway, make sure they're all armed. So all the warheads are armed. We've got five of them. This, admittedly, this is against four layers of heavy armor, so that's that's pretty unrealistic. But, again, goal is to try and get through and inside the target to do damage, not just break its armor. I mean, this is a missile, after all. It's supposed to be a weapon of death and destruction. And, again, as you guys are going to be able to imagine already, this isn't the big game changer. This doesn't do what really what you'd expect it to do. It's opened a bigger hole up, don't get me wrong. But... It hasn't gone through four layers. It, it's only just gone through the third. And that's, for five warheads, that's suggesting to me that we're ending up with a problem where these warheads aren't exploding properly, right? They're somehow triggering each other rather than exploding like you'd expect. So at this point, we've kind of established that when it comes to heavy armor, you really, you need the warhead to get any good penetration. You can throw blocks at it, but it takes a lot of blocks, and you're not leaving any missile left at the end of it. And in fact, when it comes to the warhead approach, you really want to get rid of that warhead in front of the ship, a bit like these ones we're trying to do, but with warheads, so that you don't blow up whatever the rest of your playload is with your warhead. And, you know, you, maybe you want to breach, maybe you want to blow up the rest of the juicy bits inside. Either way, the job is not just about removing the ship's armor, it's about getting inside. But then when it comes to the light armor, I mean, even these things we're getting through. Light armor is very straightforward to penetrate now. So that left me with a bit of a quandary. You've got one armor that's very difficult. It's going to require something quite complex and quite expensive. And you've got one armor that's very simple and very easy to penetrate and can be penetrated by quite a simple missile. So for today, we're going to focus on number two, because obviously to get one that works with heavy armor is going to take me a little bit more designing. I need something that somehow launches out warheads, almost Gatling gun style, in a straight line, one behind the other, but can then protect them from incoming fire. So that's a bit of a challenge for another day. For today, we're going to go over and have a look at this. Just an example of how you can take what we kind of figured out with the different armor types and how best to penetrate them, and use that to your advantage to make something kind of worryingly devastating. So a missile here is super duper simple. I'm going to remove this line here see what's in her juicy bits and it's very similar to what we got over there we've got a oxygen generator and a thruster on the back of it just to give it some forward momentum we've got two warheads and then we've got three timers there's actually one in the head as well because why waste parts that's the timer the first timer that gets used might as well then use it to do some damage because as you probably guessed we've also got two braking thrusters and a set of merge blocks so having had a look at that, let's go and fire a few of these off. And I've got to mention, this is not by any means the weapon I'm talking about. Very much more a proof of concept, something to kind of demonstrate that what I'd learned was actually working and that I could actually turn it to my advantage. So we've got these things lined up here, pointing conveniently towards the whale. A nice, convenient, static target, light armoured, which of course for these is going to be important. This isn't all about the heavy armour, but with it in different thicknesses and one of these ones where, you know, the interior is multi-leveled and there's stuff to get in the way so hopefully i don't know a decent target i won't say it's a fair test because it's not moving we're not having to track it or anything that's something that's going to come later in the design process stage one working out that payload and let's use the sensor here yes the sensor there for setting off the warheads once it gets in to actually see whether or not our testing has, has come up with something that's going to make some sense so i'll start that timer there three timers involved in making this one launch and as we go through, follow it along, and as you can probably guess, when we get about halfway down our line, it doesn't take too long to actually get this one moving and accelerating. She's going to stop, separate off, what do you call it, is a sabo? 
I think so. Separate off that bit at the front, which is going to poke us a nice hole. And then the missile follows in. And you saw, literally, it waits until the very back portion is inside. So those warheads are well inside the ship itself before it goes boom. And I think you'll agree, that's not bad. That's not bad going. It's pretty variable what blows up every time. I've run this, this particular missile into the side of this a number of times now. And which bits blow up each time seem to be fairly randomised. But every time it gets nice and deep in here and makes a decent mess. So I'm going to go and set a whole bunch more of these off so you've got something interesting to watch in the background while I say thanks a lot for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed that one and a sort of return to testing and missile design for the channel. I've kind of missed this, to be honest, and obviously I'm going to be doing more videos in future as we iterate upon this. This is stage one, bit of information about what penetrative capabilities things have. Stage two is going to be very much about deployment and tracking and how to make it practical to use it. So if you did like this, and perhaps even it might be useful for you guys in Space Engineers, then hit me up with that like button. It really helps me in the channel out. If you didn't, of course that dislike button's right next door. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe and that bell next door so you get notified plenty more of this coming up. And otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, folks. I'll catch you for the next one.